Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for Kimetsu no Yaiba episode 19. Last time on Kimetsu, we had a bunch of things going on. We had Tanjiro and, and Inosuke versus the big bad spider dad. Uh, Inosuke found out a clever, well, not, not actually that clever, but a very Inosuke technique. Hit the sword with another sword until it cuts through and ba-bam, you're done. Nice job. Uh, uh, Giyu and the butterfly lady whose name just escaped me, they have arrived. Um, they're doing pretty well, having a good time, but uh, not quite near Tanjiro at the moment, and he is the one currently engaged in combat with Rui. And when we left off in the last episode, we left off on a rather major, but rather obviously not going to be a big problem cliffhanger with one of his spider threads heading straight toward Tanjiro. Uh, and we've seen what those spider threads can do to that other, like, younger Demon Slayer guy who was kind of cocky and like, yeah, I'm just going to kill this easy one and t take his body down the mountain and become a better Demon Slayer higher in the hierarchy or whatever. Nah, he got turned into cubes. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> um, so that's heading straight toward Tanjiro. Tanjiro, if I remember correctly, swung his sword at it, and it broke. And that's one of them them special swords. So, shit. Um, side note, assuming we all survived this, I think we will. Uh, we're going to have to get him a new sword, probably. Maybe that'll be an excuse to go back and see some old friends, see some some people we haven't seen for a while, like the, the guy with the, the really weird mask with the nose who makes the swords. And Yeah, that would be cool. Um... As far as what's going to go down in this episode, I, uh, um, I don't know. Um, from what I recall, the butterfly lady is, is helping out Zenitsu, but he seems to be pretty down for the count for a while. Uh, uh, we'll see. And then Inosuke seems to be doing well. Gyu's having fun killing stuff. I figure, I feel like this is probably going to be the last episode of dealing with spider peoples, unless there's some much bigger twist than I expect. I expect that the twist reveal is Rui is maybe one of the 12 Kizuki. Uh, beyond that, I, I, don't, I don't really think... I, I can't think of anything that would like extend this particular confrontation past this episode. Which makes me think that I have a sneaking suspicion that, that this arc was just a little bit awkward to... like. Or this part of the arc was a little bit awkward to fit into the last two episodes. So they ended it last time on a cliffhanger, but it didn't feel super satisfying or anything because, well, the episode is still ongoing and we're still in the middle of an arc and they had to find a place to cut it, but it wasn't the best place to cut it. So maybe maybe the last episode was super loaded with setup and then this episode will be loaded with payoff. A man can hope, right? A weeb can hope, right? I hope. So... Yeah, those are my hopes, dreams, aspirations for this episode. I hope it's good. Let's go ahead and get on into it and, and see how it is. Uh, I have episode 19 up and ready to go. It is at zero seconds. There will be two versions of this reaction video, a picture-in-picture -picture version with the video up there, which you can find in the description down there, and a timer-based version, which will be up on YouTube. You're, wa <laughs> blah, 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 blah. You're probably watching it right now since it'll have discussion at the end and beginning and the time the picture picture version won't um but it'll also have a beep beep timer at the beginning to sync up with your own version of kimetsu no yaiba if you want to do that so if you want to do that get it ready because the timer is coming right now yep <laughs> and okay just a slice to the face low blood but it didn't look Deep. Yeah, alright. But that's fucked. That's real fucked. <laughs> ah! So I'm hoping for a sister betrayal because of the forged bonds thing from the last. I talked about it more in the last episode. I just forgot to mention it at the beginning of this one. This one that I've been using for a while just isn't working properly. So, 
Back to the classics. I like this one because it's a little more discreet and it's quieter. It doesn't usually trigger the mic. Hmm. Hinokami. I mean, it, um, something conjoined with God. Hell yeah. God of fire. Yeah, he was a pretty badass badass. <laughs> Sparkle. <laughs> nope. Nope. Oh, no. Mismatch Howard is his outfit, right? Hair, stay. Uh. <laughs> You're an idiot. Yeah. Baka. You were just saying. He's so far beyond you, you can't even comprehend. Ah. Ah. You really suck. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm <laughs> hmm. Don't get in my way. <laughs> you just notice. <laughs> Very good point, Giyu. Much more effective than trying to convince him. Oh, his eyes. Okay, how you doing, Zenny too? I like breathing. Hi. No. <laughs> nope. Yeah, the fuck you just called me? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Hmm. Glass file. Yep. Well done. Okay. Super well done. Thank you. Oh. Oh. Wait, what? Everyone still no. What? That's some bullshit. We saw some death. <laughs> With very little force, too. Seems that way. Well, they're the boys. All right, man. Could you maybe like 
Get Nezuko. Let's go. Let's go. Please be okay. I bumped the mic. Editing me. Do what you have to do. She's okay, right? Yeah, this is a real bond. This is what real brother and sister are like. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't care. See what you lack. He can't comprehend it, can he? Would she do that for you? Mm. Well, th there goes your chance, buddy. He created a family around him. They're not really his family. They're not really his family. Ah, that's pretty weird. <laughs> that's some, some imagery right there, okay. The terrified, headless person running away from the person who just decapitated her. <laughs> like, I'll do what you say. Oh, God. He wants to know how you did it. That's a very scary thing to hear. <laughs> All right, man, on the list of things that are never going to happen, um, no, no, yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. I don't think you understand how families work. <laughs> It'll just be another forged bond. Yeah. Yeah, how how has that worked out for you in the past? Damn straight. Damn straight. But he'll never fix that. No, you're going to have to kill each other. And I can't wait to see you die. Because now Tanjiro has Protec on his side. <laughs> Good. Oh my god. The eye. The eye. Lower five. Bingo. Mmm. The backstory, huh? 
You said the roles I, that you were given. Mm. Killing you. No, nope, my role is to protect my little sister and turn her human again. We'll see. That would be a problem. True, but he's my fool. I do actually. He grabbed Nezuko. Fuck. Uh... Yeah, you have you have made that girl wow, she did not flinch. Dope's dope music. Ooh. Wow. What a fucking image. He just heals. You were one scary, creepy little boy, Rui. Wow. Well, that's never good. Oh my god. Nothing. You can't defeat me. Yeah. Okay. 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 Makes sense. Shit, what, what do? Get really, really angry? That's what usually works in a situation like this. I mean, that's what my Shonen Strategy Guide says. Get really angry, but, uh, I don't think that would work. Yep. Uh, uh, that's not how torture works. Mm. Mm. So why is this episode called God of Fire? Uh... Uh, is Nezuko doing a thing? Okay. 
Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We got a dragon. It's not just a visual flourish for the OP. It's a thing. So much build up. Nezuko again. Oh. That is a great way to do that. Wait, who's that voice actor? Huh? Scenes from the ED? That scene from the ED! Our family works with fire. Okay. The fucking animation going on here is insane. The breathing technique. Okay. This insert song. Wow. Wow. That was Nezuko. Mother fuck. The bond. Oh.
two minutes left. Hey, Pops. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, please. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Hmm. Hmm. Mm hmm. Crunch, crunch. You did. All right. <sighs> so now I'm in a situation where uh, I need to say something that might be kind of hyperbolic, but I think it's true. Um, three. There, there have been, I think, I, I can think of three individual episodes of of anime that 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 come close um for this year so far one is mob cycle 102 uh episode i think it was five or six it's the episode where shit gets gets crazy one is uh fire force episode one just on on pure sakka And this is the third one. I don't I don't think I don't think there's been a better episode of anime in the past year than these three. And and I'm not confident like rating them above or below each other. I think I think the three of them are the solid three strongest episodes of anime to come out this year. Minus maybe some moments in JoJo's. Maybe. And and of the three, I think that this and Mob are higher up than the Fire Force episode. This was a fucking tour de force. Like, this, this is a moment where all of the elements came together. But I, I, I don't feel like that quite covers it. What I mean is, like, I feel like the story just finally hit a stride. And I, I don't, I don't know what I mean by that exactly. It's kind of, kind of vague and weird. But I, I feel like the last eighteen episodes, while they were entirely necessary for setting up the story, were just the, the prologue practically, and that we just started here with the reveal of the father. The, the slaying of the first Kizuki, the awakening of the, the bond between Nezuko and, and Tanjiro, the awakening of her blood demon art, all of it coming together at this point. And then we add in, that's just all the story stuff, right? Then we add in the layer of, of what Ufotable has brought to the table here, and they brought 
maybe one of the most impressive action sequences I've seen in a few years. Um, an incredible insert song and just a really, really well executed, like character in deepest moment of despair pulls self out of it thanks to bonds with family and internal strength. This was fantastic. All right, we're going to work backward through the episode um, for probably obvious reasons because I want to get to this part immediately. All right, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about this flashback in a minute, but... We basically want to start where we start. We start breathing and running. So the whole setup here is, I think, I think perfect for the story. Um, Nezuko, as person who needs saving, is always there in the background, but because of the specifics of this circumstance, Rui forces her out into the foreground, putting her in direct, like under direct pressure and in pain. Um, and it's, it's brutal, and he's horrifying. He's he's evil. He's truly, genuinely evil. And then, then we start moving. And at a certain point, I think I just have to be like, well, Ufotable is capable of some amazing shit. And they are. Because, because some of this, some of this fucking motion is absolutely ridiculous. And... The number of layers of things moving that have to all line up and make sense visually together uh, is a lot. And uh, it's pretty much flawless. Like, everything lines up. Everything works. There, there are so many different techniques being used to make all of this work. Like, usually, usually I can at least point at stuff and be like, oh, they're doing this, 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 and this. But um, I think it speaks for itself. I, I really don't think it's necessary, and I don't think that I would be able to do it justice even then. Also, can we talk about this dance animation really quick? Like, I just, I just want to talk about this really quick because uh, I'm pretty sure this has got to be Rodoed. Look at the the smoothness and the flow of the robes and stuff. Now the the thing is, it's not CG. It doesn't move like CG. It's not shaded like CG. It moves like like it was rotated and then stylized. By which I mean that they they videotape somebody wearing garb very much like this, um, and then. Probably at a higher frame rate, much higher frame rate than they needed, and then uh, drew the frames out, and then filled them in with the the character that they wanted, and then shaded them the way that they wanted. But the the detail and the motion on the like shadows on his legs, the the momentum and and really judicious use of the the motion blur, it's all incredibly impressive. Okay. So, and then he awakens the, I, I guess, the first breathing technique that he learned. The opposite of his, his water breathing. My god, that is cool. Like, they, they did that by hand. They didn't just, like, change the colors or anything. They redrew it. They... They imagined and redrew a water dragon bursting into flames. <laughs> These impact moments. Whoa. Woohoo. Just wow. Just wow. The, the incredible momentum carried throughout the scene. When we slow this down, it becomes incredibly smooth. 12 FPS. Something I think that helps when we're doing this slowed down like this um, is that the 
the background elements and and stuff when Tanjiro here is animated at 12, they're also animated at 12. Which is good. Makes things coherent. And then just... What? Look at the way that Tanjiro moves from like the right side of the frame to like oomph into the left side of the frame as he hits, as he makes this strike here. Like, the camera doesn't really move at that moment, but it almost feels like it does. Let's see if we can hone in on one of these trees and see if we actually do move. Okay, we do move. Yeah. Oh, we jitter with it, but then we follow him as he continues to slide and then launches further into another incredible spin. This moment where he turns to us gives us this feeling that this is all like a one take like a a coherent shot and it is it's, it's fucking amazing the the big sweeping motions of the camera almost feel like we're sort of like following the arcs of the fire that come out of his blade really gives a, a flow and and a desperation to the whole scene and then he sees the thread he sees the thread more threads even if it means he'll he'll cut me too and then we flash back nezuko do your best thank you mom and then nezuko fucking awakens and we hear her voice Oh my god. So when does the... So, okay, the, the way they utilize this freaking insert song is so amazing. The flow of the song... I have to imagine it was written for this. I have to imagine, because the song flows so perfectly with, like, build, 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 build. Drop it down to like slow and quiet for the Nezuko moment, and then bring it up with that with that mm, when she when she does the awakening thing. Oh my god! And then it just it just keeps going straight through. And what's what's really amazing here? I mean, we got so many layers to this. The bond between Nezuko and Tanjiro is paid off. The falseness of the bond between Rui and his siblings is paid off. The, the, his threads snap, Tanjiro's don't. Tanjiro slices with blood covered in Nezuko's exploding, or a sword covered in Nezuko's exploding blood. A bond that can never be severed by anyone. We get the impact shot, it is gorgeous. And then... We bring it in and drive it home emotionally by going to a new ending with new images of the now revealed father and them as children and the whole happy, real, real family finally ending on the two of them that remain. That's some fucking storytelling. Really like it. I really like it. <laughs> okay. So I, I feel like we've we've skimmed through the fight scene the way that I wanted to. Now we can do the rest of the episode in its normal order. So we we deal with the we deal with the cliffhanger for the last episode rather quickly. Glad, good, perfect. Uh we get a moment with I think Inosuke and Giyu. He's super impressed by him. Yeah, he wants to, to fight him and then become the most powerful. He just sort of casually gets some rope together. Uh, and casually ties him up, <laughs> which is smart. 
he gets antidotified by by Butterfly Girl, great. We have touched on on both of our our other characters who are in this situation. Now we can ignore them for the rest of the episode because we got we got shit to cover. So we fight, we fight, we fight, we fight, we fight, we fight. It goes badly. It continues going badly. Boom shakalaka. Bad moment for Tanjiro. Only possibility here is the only person who's under the net with him, and that's Nezuko, and boom. She is there sacrificing herself for her brother, and this is perfect because there's literally no other option, and the option that occurs is the best possible option because it is the antithesis of the problem that, that, that Tanjiro has recognized and stated about Rui, which is, you and your sister don't have a real bond. It's fake. You forged it out of fear. It's bullshit. It's not real. And now... Rui can't deny it because, well, the real deal is right in front of him, right? They're traveling together even though one's a human, one's a demon. One's a, a demon slayer and one's a demon. They are real brother and sister and they really care and are willing to really sacrifice each other, th themselves for each other. How is this possible? How is this possible? But Rui, like most people or many people who are totally fucking bonkers and evil um that doesn't really cover it the the twistedness of his abusive mentality is its own deal and i don't want to dive too deep into it but um instead of being like oh shit wow i could like maybe change or something no uh his sister is clearly the problem and so he lashes out at her in in just a glorious moment where he says, that's a genuine bond, I want it. I'm your older sister, don't desert me. <laughs> ah! Ah! And then this moment where he yells at her beheaded body and she picks her head up and like, ah! <laughs> it's great. Great, just fantastic. All right, so let's talk. I was really moved. I will let you live if you give me your sister, which is, I thought he was just going to like ask how he did it. How, how did you get so close with your sister? Can I get some life advice or something? Nah, he just wants your sister because that's how family works. Again, Rui's a little, little bit twisted up in the brain skull place. Uh, yikes. So yeah, on the list of, of possibilities, Rui... That's not, that's not, that's not on it. <laughs> it's not on the list. Exactly. Exactly. So, this sequence here, and the thing that he said about uh, the roles being given, makes me think, it seems pretty clear that they're not actually related, that Rui created the rest of his family, and then forced them to be subservient to him in their roles as mother who we saw being very afraid of Rui and of father uh the father who is like a tank um and then the elder sister the elder brother to to protect him all of it very focused on protecting the youngest child um sort of revealing the the kind of deep-seated uh fear and lack of self-worth and lack of feeling worthy of bonds or connections that is often the the cause or the the root like feeling the root spark of an abuser um yeah at the risk of their own lives and then he takes nezuko which is bad for him reveals that he's a 12 kizuki all that stuff and whenever whenever an opponent like are you getting closer to me? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Never a bad... N n never a good thing. Real confident. Has the, the power to back it up. Okay. Okay, Rui. Really striking scene with, with Nezuko. Ugh, shot up by wires like that. Horrifying. And then we get to the fight. I think I think having gone back through the rest of the episode again, what's what's so impressive about this fight scene isn't 
really the animation it's the flow of the fight itself um because every every moment everything that that tanjiro does every scene that we get is like it's so solidly executed to put us into the headspace that's desired by by the creators um how do i how do i hmm. We see Nezuko struggling when we need to see ne Nezuko struggling, and we need to be thinking about that. We see see Rui be being cruel when we need that. When we need to be with Tanjiro getting a little bit angrier. We get bombastic with this right when we need to. We get shut down a bit right when we need to. Every element of the fight and all of the things that we think about during the fight is just right and just the right length to make it all gel and congeal into one experience. And so, like, the reason, the reason that I bring this up is because I don't think that I can do it justice by going through it and then being like, this element is good, this element looks good, like, his dad dancing looks good, because that, that's not the core of what's going on here that's working so well what's going on that's working so well is the storytelling everything else is to serve that tanjiro dancing here at the very beginning sort of acting out a childish version of his father's dance the the storytelling going on here is just incredible the fact that this is the first time we really get to see his face that we finally get to see this scene that we've seen in the ed but only as a still frame we finally get to understand a little bit about his father. We get the implication that his father understands these breathing techniques and may have been involved in the Demon Slayers at some point, but no certainty. Although it's pretty clear that his father and Muzan met at some point because of the recognition of the earrings. Um, but we leave most of that mysterious. We just hint at it. Fine, good. The, uh, the emotion that Tanjiro expresses... The, the emotions and, and orders and, like, advice from, from people in the past, especially his father, all come in at the right time to give us the right emotional punch to push through. This moment is so lovely. And the music also, that's the other thing. Oh, that's a huge element of it, too. Because it's one, it's one big insert song that, that holds this all together, it sort of frames it audio-wise that we're carried along through the emotions of the sequence. God, and the effects animation. Can we just talk about the effects animation? I know I'm back to just like, this is good thing, element good, but but like, look, the, there's the, the fire or the explosion, blood explosion, whatever thing that Nezuko does looks different than the fire of the dragon or the water it's a different effect not just a different color or a color swap of it but it, it's actually different looking like the explosion stuff is like more jelly and goopy particulate i, I don't know it's different that's awesome and so when they when they're combined we get this this kind of crazy cool two different kinds of fire effect and all these effects they just look so good this whole this whole cut of cut i actually want to frame by frame the whole thing because there are so many cool like color things going on here so we're gonna frame by frame the whole thing so vibrating blade goes golden goes yellow arc of fire this is the the big the big mm, this is the money shot if you will we hold it you know pushing against the tension until pop also do his eyes become more red as he as he cuts his head off no they remain the same redness but then we burst through we quickly complete the arc and at the the moment the frame after it connects we we cut out everything everything for this flash frame bright red 
solid monochrome. Almost, this is very comic booky. Not even manga -y, Very comic booky. Oh, I pressed play instead of next frame. Okay. And I think we hold that flash for just a frame or two. Boom. Oh, literally one frame. So we're we're animating on uh, on 24. Um, for this whole whole dealio. Or at least the after effects are going that way. Oh wow. The the sparks and flyers and flares and stuff. Oh my god. Went straight into the ED. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, I, I, it was worth watching the whole show for this episode. Not that the rest of the show has been bad or anything or that it like detracts from the quality as a whole. It's just that even if the show were much worse, I would still have watched it all and considered it worthwhile for this episode. This was a really good episode. And again, it's not just that all of the individual individual elements felt right. It's that they gelled and that's the magic, you know? It's when everything comes together, it just clicks and just works. Oh, it feels so good. It feels so good. I really hope that the staff who worked on this episode are really proud of themselves. Um, I hope that that anime Twitter and whatever is is going mental over this shit because they should be and uh some some key animators some staff should uh should get a raise <laughs> cuz this was awesome <laughs> um oh i i wanted to look up uh the father we can finally look that up uh kimetsu no yaiba I thought his voice was very recognizable, but I don't actually recognize it. So, what's his name? Tanjuro. And it's Shinichiro Miki. I believe I know who that is. But let's look him up. I have looked him up recently. Oh, it's that guy. I know, I know that guy. He's... <laughs> <laughs> That's why I recognized him instantly. He's one of my favorite voices, period. Uh, he, he is uh, Kai Shimada from Sangatsu no Lion. Of course he is. Of course he is. Uh, what, what else might you recognize him from? I recognize him as Harmon from Bebop. Maybe. Maybe. Assassin. Uh, the, the false assassin from Fate Stay Night. Kurtz Weber, Roy Mustang in uh, Brotherhood. Okay, so so Shinichiro Miki has been in a lot of stuff, but uh, the instant recognition that I got from him was for another, like, older man mentor type character, and that would be Kaishimata, probably one of my favorite characters from Sangatsu no Lion, and given how high I rate Sangatsu, probably one of my favorite characters, just period. Um... So that's why I recognized him. It's also kind of funny. Uh, uh, Shinichiro Miki looks a lot like... What's his name? Tanjudo. Looks a lot like Tanjudo. Uh, I'll throw a picture in right here. Bing! <laughs> kind of looks like him. Wow. I'm, I'm, I know... Ah, sometimes I get this feeling where I just know that I'm going to regret ending a video when I end it because, because so often... I like, I stop recording a video and then I start editing it. And I'm like, oh, I should have talked about this, 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 and this. Damn it. <laughs> and I feel like that's inevitable with an episode like this because there was so much good stuff here that there's just no way that I possibly got to all of it or even remembered all of, all of it. Going back through it helps a lot, but, but still. I guess, I guess what I'll just say is there's no way I did this episode justice. You should probably go and watch it again. Uh, I might, I might go and just watch it again, because it was really good, and I really enjoyed it. And any any minor nitpicks or criticism I've had about about the last few episodes of Kimetsu, just just throw them out the window. Whatever, they don't matter. This did. This was really good.
And that's going to be it. That's my take. So let's wrap it up. I've been Tiabu. This has been Kimetsu episode 19. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. And I hope to catch you next week in the next one. I assume there's no way we're going to be hitting a home run like this twice in a row. But but I'll hope for it. And I will continue watching until they stop making more. So cool. God damn, what an episode. All right. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next week in the next one. Peace.